First stage with making these is getting the hair that you want. So right now I'm making a dread set that's black and red. And they're going to be single-ended, I believe. And uh, this is the kind of hair that you want to get. This isn't... Um, I normally get jumbo braids, which is normally like at least four feet long in total. This is like a two foot long chunk folded over. So it is like it's a lot longer, so it is four feet. And there is a elastic holding it at the top here, at the top. And it is by Magic, and it's from the Gold Collection, and it's called, it's the Kanekalon, Kaneka, whatever the fuck you want to call this, the KK brand, whatever, KK braid, 100%. Um, these cost me $2.89, as you can see there. Um, if they cost any more than... Um, three to four dollars don't buy it I know that there's there's people out there that just they just want dreads so bad that they spent like fucking six dollars on one bag of hair which is ridiculous uh, don't do that get it online you can find it cheaper you can get it at Walmart for three dollars you can get it at drugstores you can get it anywhere there are other brands. There's the, the Jumbo Braid brand, which is at Walmart. They, that hair is alright. This is the Tangle Free kind, which actually dreads a lot better than the other kind. Whatever. And, um, like I said, I have red and black. I'll be doing a stages for single-ended dreads. And this is the first stage, is buying the hair. Okay, so I feel like I never really explained how to do this, so I'm going to do it now in my stages video. Most of you know that when I make synthetic dreads, I always separate out the hair, like what I've done here. Um, they're all in half sections, so like half an inch, so they can be made into these thicker dreads. Now they won't be as thick as this when they get sealed, they'll actually go down to probably a half an inch again, but yeah. So I'm just going to move this over here um, and show you how I make the loop at the bottom of my dreads. Now everyone does it different. Some people when they make their dreads, um, they just pull the hair over like this like that, and then they start to back home. Now, I don't do this because when you do that, you, the loop after it comes off of here, when that loop is not secured or anything, it will eventually disappear. So you end up with like a hole like this with no section off area to uh, put the your pin through to thread your hair. Now, doing it this way makes it so you can, like, push your fingers through, like this, and grab the hair and pull it through and then braid it down. That is alright, but I don't like doing that because I like it being a nice, clean, circular thing, like a tied knot, pretty much. Um, now, how I do it, uh, some people, like I said, they do it that way. They'll even braid this part down a little bit and then back home. Um, I don't really, I don't, I don't do that unless I am making transitional dreads. But, uh, what I do is I put the hair over like this. And then I fold it over, put my fingers through, and pull the hair through like that. So it becomes like a knot, like that. And then I pull it up, and I gauge the length of the dread like this, if you can fucking see what I'm doing, if you can see it, like that. I gauge the length, that's about a foot, so I want this to be a little bit longer, so I'm going to pull it on that side, like that, so it pulls this up a bit, so now it's about a foot and two inches, two or three inches. And then you tighten that, bring this closer so you can see, you tighten that, like that, and then you back comb this. 
Now after you do that, um, this knot that you made at the top will stay there. It will not disappear. And uh, that knot makes it, like you see how it can slide so nicely through? Now when you have that hole through the end of the dread, the top of the dread, right here, can't see because of the bow, sorry. When you have that hole, here I'll make it bigger so you can see it. When you have that, and it's tied like that, it makes it so you can thread your hair through easily and then braid it down. And then when you uninstall your dreads, you can take it out and just slide it through. You don't have to worry about your hair getting tangled in with the synthetic hair at all. Now, that's why I always have the end loop like this for the top of my dreads. And uh, that also makes it easier to make dread falls to uh, thread the plastic elastic through. And yeah, as you can see I already um, mixed the fiber in these dreads and um, I attached it on my string like this. I looped it on and then I started to backcomb it. Now when you backcomb you want to make sure that you you feel out the hair so it's not in any like huge knots or anything like that. So as you can see like with this one especially um, it is very very fluffy but when you run your fingers through it you can't feel any lumps. So what you want is a nice dense backcomb like this when you make your dreads. So they uh, with, a, with a denser back comb like this, the dreads last longer, they look a lot nicer when they're sealed, and they don't fall apart like cheap ones do. Um, I always recommend doing them yourself because you're the one that's making them, so you can't really blame anybody else for fucking up. You want to make sure that it's nice and fluffy, there's no loose hair at all, so it looks like that, so it stands like that so it looks like a real dread like this looks like a real dread that could be on anybody's hair right sealing dreads is pretty straightforward um, I already have a video on how to properly seal dreads um, on my channel so please look take a look at that what I want to talk about I guess like since this is a stages video um, I've already, as you can tell, I've already sealed these two dreads. I want to talk quickly about this one. As you can see, there's not, there's not a lot of like, there's no like flyaway fuzz except for up at the top. Um, when this dread is completely dry, you can just take some scissors and snip that away. Um, what you're looking for when you seal is, um, you want it to be completely uniform. You want it to taper straight down into a point, like so, like that. Um, the end of the dread, this portion right here, is probably the most important part. And you need to spend the most time on that. Um, what I do to make that stay is I, um, I normally completely soak the tip of the dread and then I run it over again with the flat iron. And I use, like, this is just a, a cheap flat iron, like, you can tell that, like, part of it's, like, already melted off and stuff. Um, I use it at the highest setting, which is 25. I don't know if you can see that. You want it to be completely uniform. You don't want any, like, bumps or anything like that. And you want the tip to be very sharp and pointy. If the tip does fray, you can just, you know, snip it, cut it with scissors and stuff. I know that, like, some... Um, I've seen some people use lighters and stuff for the tips of their dreads. I, I don't recommend doing that because this is plastic and it will catch on fire. Um, but, uh, yeah, this is, um, that's how they should look. Completely straight. No, nothing. Except, well, this needs to get trimmed, but besides that, this is exactly what you want. This is what you're going for. Now, I'm going to show you how I do this in real time, so you can actually see me doing the tip of the dread. Now, I'm going to show you how to seal the tips properly. I start to spin from the bottom 
like so. And then I slowly work my way up till this is like taut. When you seal, you want to make sure that this is very tight together because that is how the dread will be when it is done sealed. I think this one's kind of a little bit wonky, but that's okay. Now, I'm only going to seal up to here and leave the end. So, completely soak the hair. And make sure that the ends are very wet as well. And turn your, your chair. <laughs> Turn it to tighten it because it did loosen as you put heat on it. We so make sure that's tight, nice and tight. And the best way to check the seal when you're sealing to make sure that you're doing it right is to let go of the dread. And if it completely unravels, then the seal was not, it was not sealed enough. So as you can see, it didn't unravel at all. But like, it's very straight, flat. That's exactly what you want. So when you seal, Make sure the dread is completely wet and start from the top and work your way down and work your way down. Until you get to the end. Now what you want to do is spin the end as tight as possible. As you can tell, it is a little frayed here, but that's just because I used two different lengths of hair when I mixed the fibers. So you want to make sure that that's nice and wet. You want to make sure that's nice and wet. And then... And then there is, and then there is a perfectly sealed end. That is how you want the end of the dread to look.